Today is uh, Friday, July 19th, 2024. And I consistently do this when I do the devotionals. We read a text we're using for the week. And I, I do this because I believe the Word of God is powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. And it can pierce into our heart and move us where I can't do that. So here we are in Matthew 20, verse 25 through 28. And it says, Jesus called them to himself and said, Do you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and those who are great exercise authority over them yet it shall not be so among you but whoever desires to become great among you let him be your servant and whoever desires to be first among you let him be your slave just as the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many and then we've been using this other scripture in galatians five thirteen. for you brethren have been called to liberty only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, serve one another. And I've been reading that scripture as a few additional scriptures in the Message Bible in Galatians 5, verse 13, starting there. It's, absolute, it's absolutely clear that God has called you to, to a free life. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. Rather, use that freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Love others as you love yourself. That's an act of true freedom. If you bite and ravage each other, watch out. In no time at all, you'll be annihilating each other. And where will your precious freedom be then? It's very clear in God's word that, that he wants us to be servants. It's kind of a word we resist. But I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you again, as I've done every day, to live beyond your own little world. And by love, serve one another. And if you've got no time at all to serve other people, then maybe you need to readjust your priorities. And when we choose to by love, serve one another, and we do it consistently, not just... Oh, a little piece here this month, and maybe in a couple, three months, we'll do it again. When we learn to do it consistently, the result will be a level of life that brings the highest fulfillment and the greatest significance we can, we can know. So we've talked about overcoming these obstacles, like our who's boss of our life and the excuses that we so often make, and serve, just go ahead and serve. And then we talked yesterday about the, we got to move to the place where service is a passion in our life because we're just following Jesus. And, and so I think that's really just important for us to know that all these things, all these positive things that we, we hear in God's word, that we must decide, I, I really want the joy that God gives because all this material stuff I'm trying to get a hold of, <laughs> It's just not satisfying. I gotta have more. But when you get fulfillment, not necessarily just being comfortable, but I get fulfillment, a joy comes with it, a satisfaction comes with it. Listen to this story. I got this out of a guy's sermon named Sean Rayloff, and, and I thought this was just an excellent illustration. During the American Revolution, a man in civilian clothes rode past a group of soldiers repairing a small defensive barrier. Their leader was shouting instructions, but making no attempt to help them. Asked why by the writer, he retorted with great dignity, Sir, I am a corporal. The stranger apologized, dismounted, and proceeded to help the exhausted soldiers. The job done, he turned to the corporal and said, Mr. Corporal, next time you have a job like this, and not a man, enough men to do it, go to your commander-in-chief, and I will come and help you again. You see, George Washington understood what true godly service was. As president, he didn't even have to stop, let alone get down and help rebuild that wall. But George Washington had a servant's heart, and at that moment, he did not seek rank, rank or position. He only saw that there was work that needed to be done, and more hands were needed. And he had some hands to work. Service that's, is interesting only making me feel better about myself right, right now is not good enough. See, if I just do service, well, it makes me look good, feel good, nah. No, 
but service that's motivated in the grace of God, that's walked out over our entire life, it finds its joy in just being a part, no matter how high or how low the place is in which one participates. Ah, praise God for that. I, I submit a challenge to you today, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to live my life like this. Move past yourself. Venture into consistent service that causes sacrifice, yet brings fulfillment. Think about that with your resources, your finances, your time, your talent, your energy. Move past yourself. Oh, by the way, your flesh won't like it. It won't please your flesh. But as you learn, like I'm learning, what pleases the Father, and you allow that to become what pleases you, the highest level of fulfillment attainable here on earth is going to occur. And you're going to sit at night, as I've done so many evenings, and I've said, oh, man, I'm tired. I'm exhausted, but I feel fulfilled. God, I just have this joy in my spirit. Take these gifts, these talents, these resources and abilities God's given you and use them to the glory of God by serving someone else. And I don't know where you attend church. I don't even know half the time who's, who's watching these. I, I have some record of some of it, but uh, wherever you, I hope you're going to church. I, I really believe that we're not to forsake the fellowship of, of the saints. And wherever you're going to church, have you been serving there? And you say, well, I don't, no, I'm not interested in your excuses. Go ahead, volunteer where you have some gift and ability, and even where you don't, bring someone along that has it, and the two of you make a difference, okay? And find out where there's some a hole or a need and fill it. And by the way, don't restrict it to a church. Maybe, maybe you know someone that's older and they can't take care of themselves and they need some yard work done or painting done or they need taken to a store to shop. Come on. What, what can God do through us to demonstrate his love in us to others? And there's, I'll tell you what, there's so many needs and you say, well, I can't fill them all. No, just find one. Just find one. Be consistent and serve. There's no limit. There's no limit to where you can invest your time, your energy, and your talent in the kingdom of God. And I'm challenging you, come on. I know it's easier to be comfortable. I know it's easier. Your flesh says, oh, I'm really tired. It's hot this summer. <laughs> Please, don't. I don't need any more challenges. Come on. Pull up those bootstraps and say, Private Potts reporting for duty, sir. You put your name in the blank. Join me. Let's be like Jesus. Father, I know it's your desire to conform us to the image of Jesus Christ. I want to be clay moldable in your hands. And when you have to, take it down and start all over. I just want to be used by you. I want to be one of those that's broken and spilled out just for love of you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. God's spirit rest on you today. Let's make a difference. By love, serve one another. Be blessed. God loves you.